Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The newly elected president of Hungary is visiting Poland. Katlin Novak met President Andrzej Duda and Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. The purpose of the visit is to improve relations between Hungary and Poland. Hungary is the only country in the European Union that does not allow the transport of weapons to Ukraine through its territory. In addition, Budapest does not support European Union sanctions against Russian oil and gas. Duda said he hoped EU negotiations would see the bloc issue a new packet of sanctions against Russia. Mam nadzieję. I hope that there will be a possibility to negotiate a packet of sanctions also with the Hungarian authorities in such a form that it may be applied. However, please remember that it will be very hard for the Hungarians to take action to diversify energy, which is concerned with serious investments, if European recovery funds remain blocked for Hungary. This is similar for Poland. EU foreign ministers failed on Monday in their effort to pressure Hungary to lift its veto on the proposed oil embargo. Hungary and several other member states are heavily dependent on Russian oil. Novak said it was in Hungary's interest to obtain energy from various sources and asked Duda to help in unblocking EU recovery funds from the European Commission. It is the absolute interest of Hungary that from the point of view of energy we are able to count on many sources and we need this for our sovereignty and energy independence and for this funds are required and in connection with this I ask President Duda to support us in obtaining all the recovery funds designated for us from the European Commission. The Commission has been withholding its approval to pay out money meant to help lift economies from the Covid-19 pandemic, Poland and Hungary, accusing them of undermining the rule of law. Yesterday evening, Ukraine's Deputy Defence Minister Anna Malar announced that wounded soldiers had been evacuated from the Mariupol Azovstal steelworks. During the night, Russian missiles destroyed the railway infrastructure in the Yavoriv area, close to the Polish border. More than 260 soldiers were evacuated from the Azovstal metallurgical plant, the last stronghold of the resistance in the, of Ukrainian defenders in Mariupol. They are currently in the territory occupied by Russia. Thanks to the efforts of the armed forces of Ukraine, intelligence and the negotiating team of the International Committee of the Red Cross and the United Nations, we hope to save our boys. Among them are seriously injured people who are now receiving medical attention. I want to emphasize that Ukraine needs living Ukrainian heroes. This is our priority. The operation to bring the boys home is still continuing and requires delicacy and time. 53 seriously injured soldiers were evacuated from Azovstal to the Novo Azovsk medical facility for medical care. Another 211 people were transported through the humanitarian corridor to Olenivka. But in order for them to return home, the process of exchanging prisoners will be carried out. Mariupol's defenders carried out the order, disregarding all the difficulties. To survive, the soldiers obeyed the orders of the command and counted on the support of the entire people of Ukraine. I doubt the correctness of the decision made, but this is my point of view. Managing subunits is always risky. There are no completely safe plans and operations in war. The key is to be aware that all the risks have been addressed, that Plan B has been developed, that you have done your best to give, get the job done and save the lives and health of your soldiers. Perhaps that is why war is an art, not a science. This is the mastery of military command, especially when your decision was approved by the command. Tonight, the Russians launched a missile attack near the Polish border, near Yavorov, near Lviv. The railway infrastructure facility was damaged. Air defense forces intercepted three missiles. Despite the withdrawal of Russian troops, the vicinity of Kharkiv and Sumy, as well as areas north of Kiev, are still under fire. Some people were killed and many more injured. The enemy attacked the village of Desna. Rescuers and the police are working now. Eight people were killed and many injured. The war is not over yet. The war is still raging in our cities, so I appeal to the residents to be careful. Since the beginning of the invasion of Ukraine, Russia has already lost almost 28,000 soldiers, over 3,000 armoured combat vehicles, over 1,200 tanks and 201 aircraft. Today was the funeral of Leonid Kravchik, the first president of independent Ukraine. During the funeral ceremonies, Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Defence, Alexei Reznikov, said that the country is now defending the freedom that was born in Kravchuk's time. Finland and Sweden have officially signed applications to join NATO. Turkey strongly opposes this and unanimity is needed to admit new members to the alliance. Meanwhile, in Brussels, European Union defence ministers are developing further plans to help Ukraine in its fight against the Russian invasion. The President of Finland, Sauli Ninisto, arrived in Stockholm today. 
During the two-day visit, the President will talk to representatives of the Swedish government about the path of both countries to join NATO. During this visit, the topic of the serious situation in our close neighbourhood and the decisions related to it dominate. Yesterday morning, a meeting of the Foreign Affairs Committee was held in the palace. It is now the intention of Sweden to join NATO as soon as possible, in agreement with Finland. This visit takes place at a historic moment. Sweden and Finland jointly apply for NATO membership. Our defence policy has long converged and we are now taking joint steps when the situation so requires. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan has announced that he will not agree to Sweden and Finland joining NATO because, according to him, these countries are sheltering terrorist organisations. Both Finland and Sweden refused to extradite 33 people suspected of having ties to Kurdistan Workers' Party militants or the Muslim clergyman Fethullah Gulen, whom Ankara accuses of organising a coup attempt in 2016. Delegations from Sweden and Finland are coming to Turkey on Monday. Do they want to convince us? I'm sorry, but they don't have to bother. First of all, we will not say yes to those who are imposing sanctions on Turkey, because then NATO would cease to be a security organization and we'd become a cluster of representatives of terrorist organizations. Meanwhile, in Brussels, talks of representatives of various ministries regarding the war in Ukraine are continuing. Yesterday there was a meeting of the Foreign Affairs Council, today there was a meeting of the EU defense ministers. Poland was represented by Minister Mariusz Waszczak. Today in Brussels we spoke online with the Minister of Defense of Ukraine. The presence of Ukraine at such meetings should be obvious. We should support Ukraine today so that it can join the European Union in the future. The United States Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen also came to Brussels to call on U.S. allies to increase financial support for Ukraine. Ukraine's immediate financing needs are significant. Due to the ingenuity and bravery of Ukrainian officials, their government continues to function. But in the months until tax collection can resume at pace, Ukraine needs budget funding to pay soldiers, employees, and pensioners as well as to operate an economy that meets its citizens' basic needs. In short order, we'll need to turn to repairing and restoring critical utilities and services. The European Union is currently working on the sixth package of sanctions against Russia. Among them is the embargo on Russian oil. The introduction of restrictions is blocked by Hungary. The official reason is the potential effects of the ban on imports of Russian gas on the Hungarian economy. Budapest expects billions of euros from the European Union to modernize the country's energy infrastructure. We will continue imposing sanctions on Russia to make the cost of invasion unbearable to the Kremlin. We continue discussing and unhappily today it has not been possible to reach an agreement to finalize the six sanction package. The issue will go back to the co repair and ambassadors will continue discussing. The war and European sanctions against Russia caused an energy crisis. Brussels is abusing its power overnight and wants to force us to do things that are bad and foreign to us. For the sake of European unity, Hungary will not block sanctions as long as they do not exceed the red line of defense of the Hungarian economy and do not threaten Hungary's energy security. There is no doubt that the European Union is doing everything possible to support Ukraine that has been invaded by Russia. Therefore, in addition to the sanctions against Russia, it will finance a supply of weapons and equipment for the Ukrainian army. So far, the European Union has allocated over 2 billion euros for this purpose. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.